Okay, so again with another video about CASPA and application because it is that season. We are in application season. I'm so excited for you guys. One of the questions that I was getting asked a lot is how has this last year affected the expectations of PA schools? You know, like are they going to still expect you to have like a 3.0 or 1500 hours or 5000 hours? What is it going to do? So that is what we're going to be answering in today's video. What's up you guys? It's Adam. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here with me. If you're new to my channel, you may not know what to do, but I'm going to tell you what to do right now. Take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to my loyal subscribers. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey and rocking with me on this journey. It's been a quite a ride from pre-PA slash PA school, like one day prior to getting into PA school to now being a full-fledged trauma PA for over a year, you guys. I've been a PA um, in the trauma field for over a year, which is wild, so I'm excited. Um, I had this question asked by Maya Antonio, I think is how you pronounce it. Uh, she asked, how do you think COVID will affect totals? Is it okay to have lower patient care hours? Is 1500 competitive? So again, um, I don't know if you saw like my last video, I think it might've been like three videos ago about, you know, patient care hours and how to document them in my patient care hours and, you know, all of that stuff and kind of what the expectations are um, or what they were when I was trying to apply and what I wanted to do because I knew that, hey, my GPA was like, pretty average so I wanted to ensure that I had like a decent amount of um, shadowing hours and patient care experience and uh, hours other places and a high GRE to kind of offset those things okay and so ultimately um, that was what I made in that video now to answer your question how do I think COVID will affect um, the hours or the expectations I think it affects it a lot I mean all, you, if you really sit down and you kind of think about it Look at the fact that m the majority of programs had to go on, you know, online base, right? And so we're sitting up here and schools are doing their programs online. And that was like never thought of, you know, as something that could actually like be a thing, you know, Yale doing this and the other schools that were doing uh, their online school prior to COVID hitting was like, kind of mind boggling. We're like, how can you do PA school online? But it showed that. And I think the same thing happens with our direct patient care experience and our healthcare experience and our shadowing experience, right? Because everything was shut down. So obviously for students who are trying to apply to PA school this year, you weren't able to get, you know, shadowing experience like you would have had you not have everything be shut down. Um, the schools are now accepting online shadowing experience. And that's why we started, you know, an aspect of Get That to University where you can get online shadowing. Um, because ultimately that is kind of the trajectory. You have to kind of move with the times, right? You really have to shift and make these various different adjustments because this is kind of the, the model that is being presented to us just because of the pandemic. So absolutely, I do think that the expectation and the, and the I guess you call it the totals that are required are going to be a little bit lowered specifically for this incoming class, this like 2021, 2022 cycle of PA students that are applying, but I don't really see it staying low for long. I do believe that obviously we'll get back to um, the various different expectations that each program has in place uh, at some point in time and they may start raising those averages. Uh, but because of COVID, yeah, absolutely. I do think that those totals and those averages will be lowered um, and that's just across the board. And so generally speaking, uh, if you do have 1500 hours, 1500 hours I think are a decent amount of hours anyways, no matter how you slice it, like pre-COVID or post-COVID. 1500 hours is a good amount of hours the more hours you can get the better but honestly uh, again if you are in this whole like 2021 2022 cycle have no fear the schools understand 
you weren't getting any hours, okay? Maybe you may have even been laid off, as many people were. So they take all of those things into consideration um, in their whole application cycle moving forward, and that those adjustments will be made. So don't worry, Maya, uh, if that's how you pronounce your name, I hope, I, or Maya, it might be Maya. Yeah, maybe it's Maya. So don't worry. Um, you know, hopefully uh, you you just you're still continuing to get hours, and by the time you're ready, you have a little bit more hours than you started off the year with, and then you can just explain your situation once you get that interview. Okay. But that is my two cents as somebody on YouTube just talking about, you know, my idea of what I think. If you have any other questions for me or you want some more of my two cents of information, please leave those comments in the comment section below. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel because it helps my YouTube algorithm out a lot, you guys. Follow me on Instagram at on the PA and on Instagram at getthatsuniversity.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.